Okay, so welcome back. I was gonna go to bed, but then I saw that this is the last chapter. That's the end of volume 9, and chapter 80 will be the start of volume 10, so I was like, you know what? Let's just jump into it and see what's gonna happen. So, welcome to chapter 79. It's called A Lingiri to Lingiri Talk. Looks like it's gonna be a Juno centric chapter, so. Let's see how this goes. Huh? You want me to be Adler the Reaper? Oh, that makes perfect sense. Because Juno is pretty much Louis's replacement for the Meteor Festival. So, and she has the charisma for it, and she's pretty popular around the school as well, so. That's perfect. Although I figured it'd be someone like Pina that would be Adler. That's, uh. That's interesting. So they might be changing the dynamic of the Adler play that they do every year. Yep, I believe we should make our New Year's performance very different from all the others. But, but I'm a first year and a female. This is so sudden. That's the point, you know? Everyone's always saw Atler as a masculine role. But with a female as Atler, we will show off our resolve and rebellious spirit. Oh, that's actually a really good idea, actually. A lot of the other clubs are desperate to do better than they ever have done before. So when it's time for the New Year's performance, it'll be time for us to step up our game. Going to special clubs remain active. Based off of what happened last chapter. Yep. Oh, I see. I'll do my best. I knew you'd say that. You're a B-star candidate and you're popular to boot. You're perfect for the role. Oh, that's awesome. So she, Juno's been working hard behind the scenes to become the B-star. And she doesn't really have any competition now that, like, Louie's out of the school. Lego he's not even looking at that title. So, yeah. That's good for her. I like ambitious characters like that. Uh, the mood in the school is changing a lot. It's like the carnivores and herbivores are actually getting closer. Only the grown-ups want an interspecial clubs to be suspended. We have to stop them. None of the clubs will be suspended because everyone thinks that we should stay unsegregated. Isn't that right, Gino? Of course. But what about those ongoing interspecial murders? Everyone's desperate to stop the school from getting segregated. But why? What's wrong with segregation? There's no way I could have said that in front of everyone. Really? Oh, man. So... Was Juno's, I'm wondering on that whiteboard, was Juno's vote the, the one to segregate everyone? No, I'm pretty sure she voted to like, to, to save face, to like, vote for uh, the school remaining unsegregated. So that's her, wow, that's her real thoughts on it. That's really interesting, because what I like about Juno, she's kind of a, uh, she gave a lot of bad vibes in the beginning, but she does mean well, like as a character. She like has, she's young, but she has the ability to grow. And she's shown a lot of aptitude that Lugosi <laughs> kind of lacked. Lugosi, both Legosi and Louie. So she kind of feels in that space on her own, in her own little bubble. But let's see what happens. Without segregation, we'll be exposed to the truths that neither of us want to know. Why hasn't anyone realized this? There's only one thing that we need, and that's distance. That's kind of close-minded of Juno. Like, we've only seen her really hang out with carnivores, right? Because that's, that's her agenda. Juno's very pro-carnivore. You know? Because she experienced, like, discrimination when she started school. Which is weird. It was by carnivores, but still... You, you can kind of understand her intentions with this, but I feel like her method is just running away from the problem, which is the same thing the adults are doing. Segregation and distance is not what they need. They do need to get closer so they can understand each other better. That's what coexistence is. But I want to see the conclusion she reaches on her own, though. I don't know. Good job getting that lead role. That's amazing for the first year. You have our full support. Thank you. I'm happy about the role, though. It's not like we can't stay sociable to them. 
There's no problem with smiling at them either, as long as we keep our distance. We can't. <laughs> Why can't we carnivores just maintain a stoic relationship with the herbivores? I mean, it's so simple. Because Lego and Haru exist, that's why. <laughs> There's always going to be those outliers that want something different from the norm. Oh, speaking of Lego, see, there he goes. Oh, he's with Haru. Oh, okay, they're talking again. So they're actually, like, hanging out again. Their relationship is actually so hard to read. Are they dating? Are they not dating? Are they... What are they? <laughs> it makes me angry seeing them. Oh, and it makes Juno you know, angry seeing them, too. Look at that face. <laughs> no, and they go, he just waves. Bye. <laughs> That's rough. It's her. That bunny, the herbivore who is in the who is the bane of my existence. Are they going out now? Is Legosi Senpai with that bunny? Having passionate Shogo manga like romance. What? Oh, this is just in Gino's head? Okay. What the heck is this? Legosi prefers girls who look like her. Her head is tiny. Her legs are as long as my upper arms. And she got tripped. By a bigger student. <laughs> she seems used to it. <laughs> She's like, watch where you're going, buddy. She's usually by herself despite how small and fragile she is. Does she have no friends? Where's she going? Why isn't she using the stairs for small animals? Is she going to the rooftop? Ah, oh, she, she must be going to uh, the garden. Okay. Gardening club, yep. The gardening club. I didn't even know they had one. It doesn't look like much. She's the only member of the gardening club. Did Lugosi get attracted to her because of her bravery? Oh, it's you. I thought you were Lugosi. Your footsteps sounded like his. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is good. This is the, like, the second time Haru and uh, Juno are meeting each other. The first time was in the early chapters after Legosi saved Haru and he was in the hospital bed, right? And Juno came to visit him. So that was, like, the first time that they met. And Juno kind of promised that Legosi would be hers. But she was in for a rude awakening. <laughs> for Legosi pretty much, like, rejected her. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I wonder what their interactions are going to be now. I'm not that heavy. Wait. Wait. Ah, I don't remember your name. Haru doesn't remember. So, Legacy is... I don't know. Gino's 77 kilograms. Yeah, I don't remember your name. But I know who you are. You're close to Legacy, right? <laughs> this is her inner monologue. Not as much as you are. I'm Juno. Juno, right. I'm Haru. I think I've already told you my name before. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, what are you here for? Well, I don't know. I'm leaving. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, I like this face Haru's making. She's probably going to ask her for help in the garden since she's the only one that's in there. That just makes sense, right? And all right, so this is going to be an excellent opportunity for Juno to get to know Haru better. Because right now Juno has this image of Haru in her head as this, you know, man stealing like like I can't think of a bad word to say right now, but the, you know, a man stealer basically from her point of view without understanding why, right? She has no context to understand Legacy's feelings towards towards Haru right now. So, I wonder if we're going to get something that's going to expand on their relationship with each other. Oh, and by the way, I love Haru's outfit. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's refreshing to see her like in something other than a uh, like a dress. And uh oh, even Juno got changed too to something more suitable to work in a garden. Eck. Okay, she did change those in her form. 
Don't kill it. It'll help fertilize the soil. Just let it mind its own business. You can kill slugs, though. They're parasites. Thanks for helping me. I didn't think you'd actually say yes. Please, you know that most canines can't refuse help. Aww. <laughs> I'm gonna get myself a small shovel. What am I doing here? Uh, might as well ask her some questions about Legacy. Although I already know the answers to most of them. Wait, where is it? Oh, I found it. Oof. Huh? Let's see. She's. What is she. What is she doing? That's dangerous. Like, I'm pretty sure that toolbox is freaking heavy and she's trying to get it with the pitchfork. And look at her little, look at her little frame, like a little body. She's trying to reach, that's adorable, but that's like stupid. She's trying to reach it and she's like shaking while she's trying to <laughs> strain to get it. What if that thing falls? Well, it's going to fall, but man, that's dumb. Use a ladder. It's right in front of you. You could have asked, you could have asked me for help. If this box fell down on you, you would have died. Huh? But I didn't want to keep you waiting. Hmm, okay, so Juno... I like Juno. We have the same reaction, okay? Besides, there's nothing to worry about. I'm always putting my life in danger. Please don't endanger your life when you don't need to. <laughs> That's not something to be proud about, Haru. Is... is it... Because you're so small and reckless that Legosi became attracted to you? Did she really ask that question out loud? But that's a good question, though. And Haru's wondering, and <laughs> she sneezes. Gino, are you attracted to me? Oh god, no, please, 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 please. Don't let it be like a repeat of Legosi and... Haru's first meeting second meeting I mean she's not gonna try and sleep with her is she what wait I didn't mean it like that I'm just kidding okay so they're playing okay so I think the artist might be playing with expectation right now <laughs> based off of what happened before so okay we don't we don't have to talk about him. I'm happy enough that I get to talk to a girl for once. I'll give you half of my end pen. Or what? Do you not want any? Aw, that's actually nice. You know what? This is actually really nice because uh, if, it's easy to forget, but Haru was a character that was constantly bullied at school. Because, uh, you know, she had a reputation of sleeping around with other uh, men and stuff, whether they were in a relationship or not. And pretty much almost everyone in the school knows. So, so yeah, it's this will be good to actually see her interact with the, with another girl who... Well, Juno doesn't have complete disdain for her like most other girls do. Juno's... Mm, okay, what Juno did was mean-spirited <laughs> in an attack, and she actually attacked Haru in a way other girls hadn't before but I don't know I feel like she's growing a little bit like Juno has a kindness to her and you see that in her reaction right here like she actually cares about her safety even though she's a rival so she's not a com she's not completely hopeless she's still young and she still has growing to do but that's what I like about Juno's character like it's her, like bet it's her willingness to change if she needs to right She's not a she's not an obnoxious character, although she can be a little over the top from time to time. She's not all bad. Okay, so they're gonna share some food. I'm feeling so many things right now. I wanted to stay ignorant to a herbivore's charm. You've got some bread on your mouth. Oh, that's adorable. You see Haru like nibbling on her and pan right over here. Ears flapping in the wind. <laughs> now I know why I really wanted the school to be segregated. Wrong cheek. 
You're so cute. It's because carnivores are inferior to herbivores. What? She came to that conclusion just from this? That's... What? I'm not suited to be a beast star at all. I can't place myself in even footing with the herbivores. I can't be like Louis. Mmm. That's interesting. It's so weird that they come to these conclusions that... You know, it's a herbivore dominated society, but that doesn't mean that that carnivores can't be beautiful in their own way. Like, look at Juno, she's absolutely gorgeous. But you can't lie, you, you can't deny that Louis, when he was around in the school, he has a type of eloquence and grace, but Louis has been training all his life to become a beast star. And even so, he's not perfect. Like, I, I said it before, if Louis became a beast star as he, as he is, he would be terrible for the job because he would only be full because one he, he viewed carnivores as like these bloodthirsty beasts right but now you know it's like like louis story it's like you you he's gaining perspective now now that he's actually living with those so-called beasts right we haven't really seen all of it right now but I have a feeling that Louis is actually growing to care because one because one uh, carnivore, what was his name, Ibuki, is growing to care about him, right? So I wonder, I, w I really want to see his relationship. I hope we get a Louis chapter pretty soon because I want to see that relationship kind of like blossom with Ibuki and Louis, because most definitely, like, he'll be a much more complete character if he understood both sides of the coin which is what legacy is going through right now he's getting that experience legacy is getting that experience with going um of understanding where carnivores are coming from he's like no like they can't help the body they were they can't help the body they were born into and legacy low-key empathizes with herbivores and places them on a pedestal when they aren't all uh they aren't all infallible, which is where I love Pina and how he came in and actually challenged Legosi's viewpoints on herbivores. You know, he made him feel new emotions, one of which was hate. But as you saw before, of his own volition, of his own volition, Pina actually came through for Legosi when he needed him, when he needed somebody. When Louis wasn't around, Pina stepped up and protected him, and. It can be the there are two there are two sides to the relationship and it can go both ways. Hopefully not what this relationship is leading to, like this suggestive panel right here, but yeah, it's it's complicated. The politics in this are complicated. <laughs> That's what Beastars is. It's complex. Beast complex. So Yeah. Moving on. Hey, do you know where Louie is right now? Huh? Louie? You know where he is? Try calling him on your phone. He was worried about you when I talked to him. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh yeah, Juno did talk to Louie. And I like that Juno's telling him. Wow. Legos, he's kind of an asshole. He didn't even mention, like, he didn't even mention Louie to Haru. It's funny that this is coming from Juno instead of Legos, but, you know. I like, I like that Juno's becoming a little bit more active in the lives of other characters, specifically Haru. Now, if you'll excuse me, best to leave now so that my life doesn't go crazy like those two. I like how she knows when to make her exit gracefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Juno's doing her own thing. Can't blame her for that. She's worried about Louis' whereabouts. The next chapter was... Okay, cool. Nice, so that's it. That was an awesome chapter. I'd like to see them together. Doing their own thing, so... I can't wait to see what happens during chapter 80. We are almost... Almost to chapter 100. So, it's gonna be a roller coaster. I could feel it. This manga is just all over the place. Ups and downs, lefts, rights everything it literally has everything for somebody so with that that's it i will see you during chapter 80 i hope you like it comment rate it subscribe it 
and I'll see you then.